Hi there, welcome to this video about cosmic recycling. I'm Dr. Fredrik Wallinder. It's rather easy to create any type of life, from jellyfish to humans. All you need are four elements, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen, and some other stuff in smaller quantities. The problem is of course to combine all of these into something living, and we still don't even understand the origin of life, so let's leave that question for now. It's nevertheless very clear that all types of life consist of atoms in different combinations. All the atoms which ended up here on Earth went through a very long chain of events before they got here. About half the, of the atoms in your body are hydrogen, unprocessed since Big Bang. The rest is material created inside stars. The heaviest atoms come from the supernova phenomenon, whereby a massive star explodes at the end of its life. The debris is then scattered in space, producing the next stellar generation, with somewhat more heavy elements than the previous one. What I've just described is the stellar cycle of birth, death and rebirth. Our sun will not explode as a supernova, but will instead collapse into a white dwarf whereas the outer layers will be ejected as a so-called planetary nebula. This event lies about 6 billion years into the future, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Then we have the local carbon cycle here on Earth, whereby carbon is reprocessed over and over again. Carbon is very important since molecules such as amino acids, proteins and DNA depend on it, and in effect build up all the cells in, uh, in everything living on Earth. People often assume that Earth is a closed system so that nothing vanishes or is or added throughout history. That's a good approximation even though 40,000 tons of carbon is added each year through micrometeorites. Anyhow, I'm sure that you have heard that the carbon in your body has been in all kinds of places before it came to you. Some of them nice, some of them not so nice. So once upon a time it was perhaps part of a dinosaur or the bad breath of Napoleon or whatever. It turns out that a whopping 98% of all our atoms are renewed each year, which are then distributed around the globe through various geological cycles connected with carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen, water and so on. So we are certainly not the same people all our lives, even at the atomic level, and we share atoms with all types of life that have existed in the past. Basically, everything is recycled, and that process may go on as long as the Earth allows it. It will come to an end sometime in the future, as mentioned before. Life as we know it will then cease to exist on our planet and we have to move out in space before that. What happens then with the atoms you and everything else consist of? There are of course many uh, possibilities. Most of them may belong to Earth, which then perhaps becomes a part of the Sun as it grows into a red giant. The atoms will then either be ejected in the planetary nebula or become locked into the white dwarf. In the nebula case, the atoms will disperse and become a part of an interstellar cloud, perhaps giving birth to new stars with planets around them. Nothing much will happen to the atoms inside the white dwarf, since isolated white dwarfs live forever as far as we know, if the proton is stable. Another scenario is that the white dwarf collides with a black hole in which case your atoms will experience the inside of the hole and utter destruction at the central singularity. Another option for the atoms is to become part of an expanding fleet of superintelligent beings destined to colonize the galaxy. So, take your pick. Whatever the result, all our atoms are a part of a grand recycle on the cosmic scale and the time spent here on Earth may only be a brief interval in a very long and dramatic story. Thank you very much for checking out this short video. I hope I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.